a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Candace Newmaker Candace Elizabeth Newmaker was a victim of child abuse, killed during a 70-minute attachment therapy session purported to treat reactive attachment disorder. The treatment used that day included a rebirthing script, during which Candace was suffocated. The story had international coverage. History Candace was born in Lincolnton, North Carolina to Angela and Todd Elmore. At a young age, she and her younger brother Michael, and sister Chelsea were removed from the home for neglect and separated by social services. When she was five, her parents' parental rights were terminated. Two years later she was adopted by Jean Elizabeth Newmaker, a single woman, and pediatric nurse practitioner in Durham, North Carolina. Within months of the adoption, Jean began taking Candace to a psychiatrist, complaining about her behavior and attitude at home. Though Candace was treated with medications, Jean reported that Candace's behavior got worse. During the ensuing two years, a period supposedly including her playing with matches and killing goldfish, Attachment Therapy Candace and Jean Newmaker traveled to Evergreen, Colorado in April 2000, for a $7,000 two-week, intensive, session of attachment therapy with Connell Watkins, upon a referral from William Goebel, a licensed psychologist in North Carolina. Candace died, during the second week of the intensive sessions with Watkins during what has been called a, rebirthing session. Participating in the fatal session as therapists were Watkins and Julie Ponder, along with Candace's therapeutic foster parents, Britta St. Clair and Jack McDaniel, and Jean Newmaker. Following the script for that day's treatment, Candace was wrapped in a flannel sheet to simulate a womb, and told to extricate herself from it, with the apparent expectation that the experience would help her attach to her adoptive mother. Four of the adults used their hands and feet to push on Candace's head, chest and 70-pound body to resist her attempts to free herself, while she complained, pleaded, and even screamed for help and air. Candace stated several times during the session that she was dying, to which Ponder responded, you want to die? Okay, then die. Go ahead, die right now. Twenty minutes into the session, Candace had vomited, and excreted inside of the sheet. She was nonetheless kept restrained within. Forty minutes into the session, Jean asked Candace, Baby, do you want to be born? Candace faintly responded, No. This would ultimately be her last word. To this, Ponder replied, Quitter, 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 quitter. Quit, 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 quit. She's a quitter, Jean Newmaker, who said later she felt rejected by Candace's inability to be reborn, was asked by Watkins to leave the room, in order for Candace not to pick up on sorrow. Soon thereafter, Watkins requested the same of McDaniel and Britta St. Clair, leaving only herself and Ponder in the room with Candace. After talking for five minutes, the two unwrapped Candace and found that she was motionless blue on the fingertips and lips, and not breathing. Upon seeing this, Watkins declared, Oh there she is, she's sleeping in her vomit, whereupon the mother, who had been watching on a monitor in another room, rushed into the room, remarked on Candace's color, and began CPR while Watkins called 911. When paramedics arrived ten minutes later, McDaniel told them that Candace had been left alone for five minutes during a rebirthing session and was not breathing. The paramedics surmised that Candace had been unconscious and possibly not breathing for some time. Paramedics were able to restore the girl's pulse, and she was flown by helicopter to a hospital in Denver. She was declared brain dead the next day as a consequence of asphyxia. The entire 70 minutes of the fatal session, as well as 10 hours of other sessions from the preceding days, had been videotaped as a matter of course with Watkins' treatment. All the videos were shown at the trial of Watkins and Bonder. Convictions A year later, Watkins and Bonder were tried and convicted of reckless child abuse resulting in death and received 16-year prison sentences. Britta St. Clair and Jack McDaniel, the therapeutic foster parents, pleaded guilty to criminally negligent child abuse and were given 10 years probation and 1,000 hours of community service in a plea bargain. The adoptive mother, Jean Newmaker, a nurse practitioner, pleaded guilty to neglect and abuse charges and was given a four-year suspended sentence, 
after which the charges were expunged from her record. An appeal by Watkins against conviction and sentence failed. Watkins was paroled in June 2008, under intense supervision, with restrictions on contact with children or counseling work, having served approximately seven years of her 16-year sentence. Effects The story of Candace's death was a national one in the United States, with contemporaneous reports about her death and the subsequent trial of her therapists appearing in newspapers and news magazines all around the country, as well as internationally. The case also generated enduring controversy about attachment therapy. It was the motivation behind Candace's law in Colorado and North Carolina, which outlawed dangerous reenactments of the birth experience. The U.S. House of Representatives and Senate have separately passed resolutions urging similar actions in other states. In popular culture, the 2017 web series Petska preludes to Newmaker, with references including the name of the Newmaker plane, the setting of the titular video game, and several mentions of a character named Tiara. The popular YouTube channels The Game Theorists and Pyrocynical covered Petska, and in extension, Newmaker. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?